my God, oh my God, this thy servant hath advanced towards thee, passionately wandering in the desert of thy love, walking in the path of thy servants, anticipating thy favors. And hoping for thy bounty, relying upon thy kingdom, intoxicated by the wine of thy gift. Mm. Oh, 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 my God, increase the fervor of his affection for thee, the constancy of his praise of thee, and the ardor of his love for thee. And the ardor of his love for thee. Oh, verily, thou art the most generous, the Lord of grace abounding. There is no other God but thee, the forgiving, the merciful, the forgiving. The merciful. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I think there's one uh, thing that might be added to what Mr. Furitan has said about the shrine. When one approaches the shrine from the side uh, facing Akka and facing the Qibla of the Baha'i world, the shrine of Baha'u'llah, one passes by um, the top of a series of nine terraces that rise from uh, the broad avenue below up to the level of the shrine. Now, when the guardian completed the last two of those terraces, he sent a very interesting and very um, stirring message to the Baha'i world. And he said that uh, this would in the future be the route by which the pilgrim kings would ascend to pay homage to the martyr prophet of the faith. And he also said that first, before doing that, they would visit the shrine of Baha'u'llah, then they would ascend <clears throat> by this uh, route of the kings, these nine terraces, to pay homage uh, at the shrine of the Bab to the martyr prophet. Well, when I received the joyous news that um, uh, the guardian had extended to me the bounty of a pilgrimage, I was, of course, overjoyed. So eventually I arrived in uh, Haifa. Uh, the guardian was not here the first night. He was in Badji, and so hour by hour went by. The time of my coming in the presence of the beloved guardian came closer and closer, and my trepidation increased hourly because I felt, as every pilgrim must have, certainly they were unworthy to come into the presence of the guardian. In those days, the Western pilgrims uh, had the bounty of uh, having dinner with the beloved guardian. He came to the Western pilgrim house and he sat with us and talked with us during the meal. So the, um, it was announced, finally the hour came, it was announced that uh, the guardian was awaiting us downstairs. So I uh, was hoping that the other friends living in the pilgrim house would uh, those serving here would precede me, and I could sort of follow along afterward. And one of them said, oh, no, no, the pilgrims always go first, and gave me a shove down the stairs, and there I was. 
And I came into the presence of the guardian with the trepidation that I mentioned earlier. And he immediately saw and understood everything. And he embraced me, bade me be seated. And from then on, from then on, I felt completely at ease. You know, every Baha'i knows that the guardian was the uh, sign of God on earth, the interpreter of the word of God, the authorized interpreter of the word of God. But he was also uh, the head of the administrative order, the divinely ordained administrative order. And I had an opportunity in those brief hours with him to see how thorough was his grasp of everything and how he followed up everything. At the table each night he would give instructions to those here serving him. The next night he would follow up and, and ask for a report, ask if uh, certain things had been done. There was this ceaseless uh, attention. He never just apparently gave an instruction and forgot about it. He followed up on it. And uh, he insisted on, on, on getting all of the facts that would have a bearing on a particular problem and its solution. Um, and I remember once he turned to me and he said, now, the National Assemblies also must provide me with the facts, because it is only with correct information and with correct facts at my disposal that I can make the proper decisions. I'm always urging the National Assemblies to keep me fully informed. He spoke um, about uh, the decline of religions. He seemed to place a great deal of emphasis on that, and he said that the existing religions are um, constantly becoming more and more political. And he said that to the extent that this trend continues and to the extent that they continue to become more political, the more rapid will be their decline, their decline as religious force in the world. He said it's inevitable and it will happen.